Hey guys, uh, so I'm gonna make a short video, uh, well, a semi-long video on how to do C++ and classes on, on the Pi Pico. So we're gonna uh, see how difficult or how easy it is to do C++ uh, for this little thing. We're gonna be controlling the LED uh, via the phone through a Bluetooth uh, module, the HM11. So the LED on the board is connected to GP25 and uh, the HM11 will be connected to uh, pin 22 and 24, uh, 21 which are GP17 and 16 for UART0. So without any delay let's get to it. This is my project file so to create a new project you have to create a new folder Give it a name, we'll call it Pi uh, Pico HM11 for the demo. And then you open the folder in Visual Studio Code to create your project and you start adding your files. So the first file we need to add, and this is a requirement, uh, is CMake uh, list lists.txt. And also, uh, we're missing a file here, so if we go back to the folder, uh, the reason I have this one here is because it needs to be inside every project, so I ju I'll just copy it over, and you'll see it appear here. Okay, so we go back to our CMake lists, and we start adding the, uh, the minimum requirements for the configuration for this to work. So, say minimum require will be version 3.12. And we need to include that file we just talked about, this one. So it'll be pico sdk uh, import dot cmake. And then uh, this will be C, all C++, so we'll have to specify what standard we're using, which is uh, C++ standard 17. And then we name the project. We'll name it HM11. And then we need to add, oh, sorry, you need to initialize the SDK and then add your executables, HM11. Uh, we're gonna add the list here as soon as we start having them. We don't have anything right now. Then you add your target libraries, put your project, HM11. We, we need two for this demo. So the first one is the Pico STD library. And the second one is hardware. Hardware, yeah. Underscore UART. And final line, this one's important. Pico add uh, extra outputs. HM11. This is the one that creates the that uf2 file without it you you won't get that file uh, so now now that we have this we can save it uh, we'll add the other file which will be main.cpp cpp because it's c++ uh, so we're not going to add any code right now we're just going to add it here this is one of our executables and for some reason my setup doesn't doesn't configure anything i need to I need to close the folder once I have my initial setup and then open the folder again and the configuration will take place. So there it goes. Let's wait for that to finish. So, so far, the only thing I like about this is that it's very pleasing to the eyes. It, it, it looks really nice, but outside of that, uh, I don't have any real use for it. And if you're a new user and you're trying to get into electronics, this is not the right uh, unit to get into. Get an Arduino, much easier than this. This one requires a ton of software to be installed on your computer. And all of that software is finicky. So, uh, you know, it's a headache getting it to work. 
once it's working, everything's fine. It's just like any other uh, development environment, but the initial setup is not easy. It's not simple. And there's a lot of steps. There's so many things in between that could go wrong. Anyways, so this is complete. Uh, it's good, we're good to go, so we have that. Let's add the minimum required code here. So we'll have the include uh, pico uh, std library. And then the next one will be the hardware uart. And we need a, a main function and it needs to return. And here we need a loop just to do our processing. So that's the minimum required. Uh, so here's my folder. It doesn't have anything. I'm going to compile it. And we should see all the files being generated. Once we see that, we'll go into the actual code and write the, the real class to handle communications uh, through Bluetooth. Okay, so it's compiling. You see that it has a build folder. I forgot to open that one. And the rest of the files are gonna pop up here once it's done compiling. Okay, it's a little slow because I, I'm recording video. Okay. 90%. All right, we have a successful build. So here it is. This is the file for your pickle. Doesn't do anything right now because we didn't add any, any real functionality. So uh, let's start doing that. So we need to initialize the UART and uh, we need to specify which port. So UART zero. And we need to specify the baud rate, which will be 9600. That's the default for HM11. Uh, we also need to specify the GPIO uh, set set function, and we specify the pin. It will be we say it was going to be uh, uh, GP sixteen and seventeen. So it will be sixteen GPIO on UART, and we do the same for the next pin. We just change the pin here. Now we need to initialize the uh, the LED GPIO uh, in it, and the pin is twenty five GP twenty five. This is the wrong one. All right, it's right here. And we also need to specify the direction. So so set direction on 25 will be one for output or you can put you know gpio out same difference you know, obviously this one's more descriptive but you know you don't have to remember a one okay so that's it uh the code will go here for the rest of the stuff but we don't have it so let's go create that we're gonna create a part uh, a, a folder sorry we're gonna call it lowercase src for source and inside that one, we'll create our uh, HM11, that's H. We're, we're gonna put uh, a class. Before we do that, we need to add it to our executables configuration. So it's inside src slash HM11, bag H. Okay, now we can go to that one. Here, we're going to need a few things. So we're going to include std uh, lib. Also, uh, std io. Include string for memory. And include st arguments for dynamic arguments. And I think that's it, hopefully. Oh, uh, let's add also hardware uh, UART. So we have access to IntelliSense for that one. So now we just type class, press enter. It will give us a template. We'll take it. That's what we want. OK, 
Okay, so we'll say we'll we'll have private bars, also public ones, and public uh, functions. Okay, so first with the uh, private ones, so we need we need a buffer, 100 characters. This is to store uh, the, the data as we're getting it, since we're going to be getting one character at a time. We also need a, um, a way to, uh, to know how many characters we have so far in the buffer, since we have a limit of 100. Uh, for public variables, we need also a buffer for, once we have a message, we want to have it separate from the buffer, because we're going to continue getting more data. All right, 100. And we also want a flag to tell us that we have a new message. Okay, would be false. Uh, the rest of the stuff will add it as we need it. I don't remember what that is, but once we start creating the functions, it will come to me. Uh, first function, we need to get the data we're getting. Second function, uh, we need to parse the data or parse command. So the commands we're going to be getting uh, will be two parts. It will have a field and a value. So we need to be able to, once we get a message, taking a part, get, get each of the components so they become useful. And the last one, we want to be able to send messages back to the phone. So this will be a pointer to message. And we're going to have unlimited uh, parameters as well so we can format the data we're sending okay so now let's go get our data so let's go create that function actually we need more uh, stuff here so we also need to keep a uh, we, we need to keep track of the port we're connecting to so uh, we're, we're gonna get an instance of the port and then we'll, we'll keep it as a pointer so we'll uart port and let's copy this because we are gonna get it when we initialize okay so we'll put it here as well and here uh, we just need to assign it so we keep a uh, a, a pointer to the port uart port okay i know they're the same name but this one's referencing that one and this one my this one here that's why it has this at the beginning all right so now let's go get data HM11. Oh, it didn't come across. Probably have an error somewhere. Usually, when it stops giving you information, is because, oh, STD. Yeah, standard arguments. There we go. HM11. There we go. What's a typo? All right, so to get data, uh, very simple process. We just need to do a loop. Uh, yeah, as long as UART is readable. What that means is that there is data in the queue and you can get it. UART port. You specify the port. If it's more than zero, we have data. So it returns the number of characters waiting to be picked up. So if we do have data, uh, we'll get one character at a time. So UART uh get c uart port and then this is where it gets tricky so you want to see what you got right so is it a, is it something that indicates a new message you know the, the completion of a message so uh control return indicates a completion of a message it could also be a line feed which also indicates a completion of a message or you may your buffer may be full so if it's full more or equals to 100 then you have a new message right now we can copy that message from the buffer to message and then uh memset we can clear buffer
and now we can set our flag uh, indicating that we have a new message so we'll say true and then we reset the buffer counter to zero right uh, it's complaining about this one something to do with this one not sure what we'll find out once we compile or let's see m copy is undefined why m copy should be here under string oh cpy sorry there we go okay so else if none of those conditions are true then we have a new character and we want to store that in our buffer counter uh, we want to increase it by one after it's assigned okay uh, we're done with that message the next one is to parse the command so to parse the command we do need more uh, global variables uh, we need a couple of buffers well one will be for field name it will be a hundred the other one will be for field uh, value string so the value in, in in text representation or representing as text 100 as well and finally we want the actual value as a number okay so that should do it now let's go uh, define our parse command okay so on this one uh, first we get a pointer we want to split the, the the message so we want a pointer and uh, we're going to use strtoc to split the message into multiple parts whenever we find a delimiter so we'll put message here the delimiter will be that a colon that's what we're getting from the phone and uh, so once we get the first part we'll get a pointer to the first uh, element of whatever that is and we can store it so we'll use sprint to copy it over uh, to field name and we'll put it we'll put ptr and we'll do another one because we're going to need the exact same thing so ptr equals str t okay and we'll put null on this one to indicate that uh, we're continuing with the next uh, element same delimiter and this one is field name uh, field value sorry string last one is the uh, field value by itself and this one is by just doing a conversion from text to a, an actual value so field value string and that's it so that's our that's how we parse a command uh, the last one is sending a message so let's see so void hm11 send message and is saying that we need a pointer to a message and then parameters <clears throat> so before we can send a message we have to make sure that we are able to send a message so we do that by uh, saying is writable right uart is writable meaning that uh, the, the buffer has space for another message although we're not going to check how much space but we're just going to assume that it's safe to send it uh, you give it a port and if it's false then you return we don't want to wait we don't want to clog the system by waiting for the UART to become available so we'll just skip that message and continue processing somewhere else but if we are able to send uh, then what we want is we want to get uh, the uh, the variables that we got here in this ellipsis so built-in VA list arguments and then built-in VA start and we put the arguments and it starts after message and then we use sprintf to uh, to copy that stuff into the message itself so we need a local buffer 
and we'll say 100 is the limit. I right, say so it'll be 100, and we'll put stuff in buffer. And the stuff we're going to put in is whatever is in message, which is the formatting portion of the message, and then the arguments. Then uh, we just built in VA and arguments. And finally, last line, uh, we send the message. So puts playrt port, and we put buffer. Okay. Remember this buffer. This buffer is not the buffer we have up there because we declare a new a new one. So this is a local variable now. If I wanted to get to the other one, I would have to do this, and then it would point me to that one. They're two different things. Okay, so I believe we're done with this. We have it added here. We need to add it to the includes here. SRC HM11. And if I did it correctly, we should be able to just say HM11, right? And then call it phone. And we'll pass the port to UART0. And uh, before we do anything, let's compile and let's fix any errors that might come up because that was a lot of code. We don't want to continue adding code if we have errors. <clears throat> no errors. So it compiled. Here's the time. Is the time down here? So it's a uh, 10:46. So now we can make use of the of that the new communication flexibility we have. So now in the loop we want to call uh, we want to call the get data function all the time. So if there's data we can get it, and then we can check to see if we have a new message. And if we do have a new message, then we want to uh, first off obviously we want to say new message equals false because we picked it up. So we need to flag it that there's no new messages, no more new messages. And then uh, we want to parse the command. And now we can check what we got. So we can say str, str compare. And we're going to compare the, Jesus, uh, the field name against what we're expecting. We're expecting something that says LED. So that's going to be the command coming in. And if it is the same, we'll get an, a zero. And if that is the case, then we should be able to just say GPIO uh, put 25 to whatever the phone value is. And that will be the way of blinking the LED. So, unfortunately, uh, I don't have the Pico connected to my laptop. I have it on my Mac, so I have to compile, email it to my Mac, and then I'll do it. So let me compile it first. Let, let's make sure that it compiles all the way through. You'll see it here. Okay, zero. So 1047 is done. Now let me email it. Hold on. Let me grab it. Bring it over. Uh, didn't move. Let me bring it over again. There it goes. All right, so let me send it. And let me switch my view. Okay, so here's my phone. Here's my unit. Uh, let me, uh, oops. so let me put it on the phone. Obviously we're not going to see anything. Uh, actually let's, uh, uh, no, let's just leave it the way it is. All right. So, so let me put it on the, uh, let me see if I got it already. Let me see if I got my mail or did I send it to, oh, there it is. All right. So I'm going to drop it on the unit. There it is. Nothing's happening. Uh, let me open my application here. We'll add a, a console just real quick and we'll add two buttons, one to turn it on and one to turn it off. So let me add one more button here. 
and uh, let me bring this down. Let me first connect to it. Well, actually, after let me uh, let me set it up. So this one will say on, and it's gonna send a command that is gonna say LED, which is the one we specify, and it'll send a one, and this one will say off. And it's gonna send LED and it's gonna send a zero. Since uh, we know that uh, on the LED, if you put a zero, it turns it off, and if you put a one, it turns it uh, on. So now we can connect to it. This one is tank. Let me save up the whole thing. The remnants is connected. So now if I press on, if I did everything correctly, that LED will turn on. There it is. And off. Ah, oh, it's not doing it. That's because that's not a zero, see? It was also displaying what I'm sending, so um, I guess I put an O instead of a zero. That's the zero, right there. So now it's off. On. Oh, it is working. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. But anyways, there it is. So, so there's your blinker with a twist. All right, so <clears throat> I almost forgot. Uh, we created this uh, function here to send messages, but we're not sending anything. But also, uh, this is incorrect. It needs to be VS print. So let me uh, go back to main. <clears throat> And here, uh, when we get a message uh, and we, uh, whatever we get, we're just gonna send it back to us. So we're just gonna say uh, phone send message, and it'll say uh, back to you. All right, so it will be. Uh, the message we got, which is uh, whatever we have in the message itself. Actually, I'm going to send something different. I'm just going to send the the field, so it'll tell us what the field is, right? And then the field value or the value, uh, and also the value as a string just so we can see what it is. So phone, uh, field name, and then again, phone, field value. Yeah. And do I keep mistyping phone? Field value string. So let's compile this. And let me go back to my folder while it compiles. <clears throat> let me get an email going while this compiles. Is it done? Yeah, it is done. All right, so 11.15. So I was I was reviewing the video and I noticed that um, I didn't type the VF print correctly and I didn't test that. I didn't show you that, that part of the code, so uh, typed all that code for nothing pretty much so I'm gonna email this to myself again and there it is sent still my application still there running uh, what I need I need to go to my Mac get my email and should be able to dump the file There it is. So now when I send a message, make that make this a little bigger so it's easier to see. Let me move this up. All right. So when I send a message, we'll get um, According to this, we'll get a field and whatever name the field is, which should be LED, a value, should be zero or a one. 
and then a zero or a one as well, but it's a string representation. You're not gonna see anything different there. So let me send on. All right, it turned on. We didn't get any message. Now there's a reason for that. Let me go and show you the code. The reason is because I forgot, like always, forgot to put the uh, control return, which is what is needed uh, on the phone or at least on, on, on that software I'm using. Uh, to tell it that a new line or a complete line came in. So we're compiling again. Let me get another email going. And is it done compiling? Not yet, still going. All right, done. Let me drop that in. Send it. Let me switch the view. And again, let me disconnect this thing. All right. Go to my Mac. My email. There's the email. Drop it. Okay, so now when I press it, you see that I get that part. I get the field LED value, whatever it is. So, which means that, you know, I could, I could have something like, uh, uh, I guess let's put another button just for kicks. And uh, this one's just gonna send a, a bunch of nothing. So when I press it, you'll get that I get a lot. There's no change here because you know it is looking for for led so if it says something else it doesn't catch it but led does on and off anyway so that's what i forgot so i recorded the second part of the video so i'm gonna splice the video together not splice the video put the video together and um and then uh you'll see so later